All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over some of the journal entries you're going to encounter when it comes to the equity method and kind of explain through these journal entries. So the first journal entry that we're going to come to is when we actually uh, decide to invest in an investee. So an investor decides to invest in an investee. And so obviously cash or some kind of assets going to exchange in that transaction. Well, cash is going to go down or the asset's going to go down. Therefore, we'll have a credit to cash and then debit to an account called investment in X Corp. And there may be different ways that we signify that, um, but the easiest way is just to say investment in X Corp, and we may put the corporation's name um, for that amount. So that's kind of the initial thought there. Um, one of the things to kind of understand is that sometimes these acquisitions can be done in cash and stock, and so we would have to make entries based on the asset that's given up or the equity that's giving up, given up in order to get or receive that investment in the investee. All right, next one would be after we've now set up that initial investment in that investee, and then they have income. So how do we report that? So <clears throat> with the equity method of journal entries, we are going to debit the investment in the X Corp, and we will credit an account called equity in X Corp. Now, the thing to understand about net income is as a equity method, when the company produces a profit, we will book the profit even if we don't receive any of it. So if our investee has a $100,000 net income for the period and our investment in that investee is 30%, then we would put in here $30,000 and $30,000. So what's happening here? We're increasing our investment account by $30,000. We're also increasing an equity in X Corp by $30,000 as well. Now reminder, we're not receiving any of the income necessarily. We're just reporting the net income that the investee had on our books on the investor side. Now we use the accrual method, which means that when they make that income, that's when we report it. We don't report it when we receive the cash or the dividends. And the reason why is because we can influence the dividends if we have a significant influence on the organization. That's what the equity method is for. So that can be understated and overstated based on how we want that to be reported on our books as the investor. So, Debit, investment in X Corp, credit, equity in X Corp. That's if net income is reported. The opposite is true if a net loss is recorded. In this case, we would debit equity, credit, investments. Okay? So again, this is pretty easy. All we need to know is how much net income or net loss did the investee have during the period, and then we book the following entry into here. Okay? And so when they're reporting net incomes, we need to report our share of that net incomes right away in these entries here and then the loss here. All right, other big thing that could happen is a dividend is paid. Again, we might have significant control over when the dividend gets paid and how much that dividend gets paid. So therefore, we can't rely on that as income, okay? That's why we're doing these journal entries over here. Therefore, when we receive dividends, we are going to debit dividends receivable and credit investment in X Corp. Now, let me not mislead you. When I say receive, I don't necessarily mean actually receive, but when they're declared. So when they are declared, debit, dividends receivable, credit, investments, and X Corp. What happens? Our investment in X Corp goes down. Why does it go down? Because we're receiving the money. Therefore, we technically have less equity in the organization. Okay? Now, our percentages are still going to be the same because dividends are typically... Um, distributed based on the percentage of ownership or, or whatever that document says when we make that investment in X Corp. Um, but we technically reduce our investment in X Corp because we have less of it when it comes to a monetary value over here. Okay, So credit investment in X Corp, debit, dividends receivable. The reason why um, we debit dividends receivable is because the dividends can be declared in one period and then paid off in another period. 
board of directors have said that we are going to declare the dividends and we're going to receive it on X amount of days. So when they're declared, they become official and it might take a little bit of time for all the paperwork to be done in order for them to release that dividends to the investor. That's why we book it right away. Once they're declared, they're technically ours. Okay. When we receive the dividends, then we debit cash because we're receiving cash and then we're crediting receivables to get rid of this receivable. Therefore, our dividends receivable becomes zero because those would cancel each other out. We would receive cash and then reduce our investment in X Corp. So those are the journal entries that you're going to encounter when it comes to the equity method. And again, these are just some of them, but these are kind of that building block of doing the equity method. The initial one is the debit investment in X Corp, credit cash. Then if net income or net loss is reported, we'll either debit investment or credit investment, and then the corresponding debit or credit when it comes to equity. When a dividend is declared, debit, dividends receivable, credit investment in X Corp. And then when dividends are received, debit cash, because we're receiving the cash, credit to dividends receivable.